What's cracking, everybody? Hello and welcome back to Gaming 101 with Mr. Burger. Tonight we're going to take a look at this interesting Expo Spawner deck. So it's very off-meta. It's definitely a little bit dated, and I actually streamed this deck not too long ago. I've been streaming more and more lately, and it's been going really well. So I'm going to live play these matches for this particular video. So why don't we go ahead and see how it goes. Now this deck was featured on Clash with Ash as usual, and it's actually another deck that was kind of made popular by Pompeo, kind of crafted by him. So it's very valid, or at least it was a few months ago. Things have been tweaked here and there, so it's not as relevant as it used to be. And in fact, I might even run the Furnace in the place of the Barbarian Hut, because the Barbarian Hut is kind of off-meta now. That being said, sometimes playing an off-meta deck can play to your advantage. So, one other thing to note, <clears throat> I'm actually running the Princess in the place of the Ice Wizard. I don't really like the idea of placing an Electrowiz and a Wizard, or an Electrowiz and an Ice Wizard, or any of two of the three, maybe even a Musketeer, together, because they all have the same health range, and they all you know, kind of have the same range, attack range as well. So they'll generally wind up sitting in a very close spot, it's very close proximity to each other. Let me answer this on the left here. And so then they'll be very vulnerable to, you know, like fireballs and things like that. So that's why I actually like the princess in this. And there's kind of a very slight hint of zap bait or log bait or spell bait to this because you've got this massive spawner wave that you have the potential to build up and they may decide to log or zap like he just used his log there on those two barbarians so now I could safely put my princess down so let's see how that goes nice takes out those bats too so let's go ahead and jump more into the game here and let's I'll talk about kind of how, what I'm doing here and the decisions that I'm making so at this point I'm kinda of playing a little bit safe trying to build up the spawners a little bit I'm getting to double time now which is where I'm really gonna shine because then I can get a lot of the spawner buildings up That'll be really powerful, and I'll probably be able to overwhelm him, build up into this massive snowball. Alright, why don't I answer this thing on the left here, again with the bandit. The bandit was able to shut it down pretty well, that battle ram last time, so does it again. I haven't even shown him my expo yet. I'm kind of waiting, I'm kind of cycling, want to get a big push going. And, you know, he's he's also forced to put a lot of stuff on the right there to counter my big wave so then I can uh, distract him from pushing on the left at the same time. There goes the log again. So let's see, let's get more spawner hunts down, why not? It's a spawner hunt based deck. I'm gonna put the bandit aggressively on the left here now that he's distracted on the right there, see how that goes. Alright, he uses the e-wiz there, but that's four, four elixir for my three. Alright, let's surprise him. Ooh, actually, I got a counter left there. Okay, let's surprise him with the expo here. Hopefully this works out. Yeah, I got a solid support going on the left there. Nice, expo locks on. Yeah, totally cut him off guard. He uses the Inferno Dragon, unfortunately he uses it on the E-Wiz. So I'm just going to spell cycle and make sure that I finish off that tower, and that's pretty much going to be GG. Awesome, that was a great first match. Now, if you didn't catch it already, I actually streamed the same exact deck not too long ago. So go ahead and check that out. Um, I'll put a card up to it at some point in this video. So if you guys are interested, check out the card. You know, kind of, it's going to be like way up there above me here. Above the blue version of me with the fake knight mustache. Anyway, let's jump into another match here. Now, again, I did trophy drop to make the matches a little bit easier because it's kind of an off-meta and not super great deck right now. But it does have potential to do well. And I just thought, for the sake of showcasing the deck, I'll drop some trophies first and then jump into some matches. It's not too bad. The enemies right now are only one level lower. And look, like, he's got a level 8 wizard. Like, that's the same level as my rares, so that's not bad at all. I'll go ahead and fireball that. Get some chip damage off from the tower. Do some damage to that wizard there, so it's more easy to counter him. Yeah, and what I'm going to do is E-Wiz here, when the wizard gets a little bit closer. 
and that'll finish that off. And then I'm gonna goblin hunt here, that'll distract the golem. Ooh, I gotta answer that. I got a uh, princess, so that should be able to answer the minion horde pretty well. I'm gonna put her on the right here, actually, so that she makes sure she locks onto the minions rather than the golem. Nice, look at how well that shut that down. Well, actually, no, he got some good damage off, but it could have been much worse. Alright, let's see what I do next here. What do you guys think? Well, I can't ask it because it's not a stream. I'm used to streaming now. I've been streaming more and more lately, and it's really effective, man. I get, like, a lot of views on my streams compared to when I just upload a video. I mean, some of my videos, especially some of my older ones, definitely have a lot of views compared to my streams, but, like, the streams in, like, a day will get, you know, just as many as some of my better videos, so that's pretty great. Uh, so I'm going to keep doing that more and more. It's a lot of fun for me, too, because it's less prep. I can just jump into playing. I get to interact with people. Like, I really enjoy it. So keep up the feedback, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want more streams, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Alright, he decided to rocket that. Okay, let's see. I'm going to Princess. That's going to be my counter to the Minion Horde, pretty much. She does a pretty good job of shutting it down. The thing is, you got to make sure that she locks onto it. Yeah, she does there. The Barbarian had actually pulled the Minion Horde to the center there, so that probably would have shut down the Princess. Or, I, without the Princess, that would have shut down the Minion Horde there. Because the Princess Towers themselves would have done the job. Alright, I'm going to Expo defensively here, and I'm going to go ahead and log all that, get some chip damage off from the tower, and the Expo will pull away the Golem and do some good damage to it. Why don't I go ahead and bandit this guy here? Now, just really quickly, card replacements, guys. You want two spawner buildings. The Goblin Hut and Barbarian Hut are cool because they spawn, you know, units that actually go and fight, whereas the Furnace, they just jump and explode. I mean, don't get me wrong, that has the potential to push and get some really good chip damage, but uh, I like the two spawner buildings that spawn consistent units. And the Tombstone is just a little bit weaker. The Skeletons don't do a whole lot. Their job is more to distract, and it's kind of like to counter hogs and things like that. So I recommend two spawner buildings. The legendaries are not all that important, and honestly, most of the time, if you do have the legendaries, you can probably go most of the fight without even using your spawner buildings until the end there, until the double elixir time. Obvious for the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, for the princess, you could do ice wizard. You could also probably run like a dark goblin or something fun like that. For the bandit, you know, usual dark prince, battle ram. For e wiz, my go to would be like a musketeer. Log would be Zap. If you take out the Expo and the Spawner buildings, then it kind of changes the archetype of the deck. And, of course, Fireball, you can always do like a Poison or a Rocket or something like that. Alright, why don't we go ahead and do one more here, and then we'll call it a video. We'll do a shorter video tonight, since I've already streamed this deck. So let me know what you guys think about the length of the videos. I appreciate any and all feedback that I can and do get. On like, you know, do I like the shorter 10 minute videos or the really short 5 minute videos? Uh, some people said they like wa sitting down and watching the long, you know, 30 minute videos. And like, I love to do that. But honestly, when I look at the view count of most of my videos, I see that a lot of people only watch them for, you know, like 3 or so minutes. And I don't blame them. You know, when you're watching on YouTube, you kind of, that's kind of what you do. You kind of, um, oh, I better answer this here. Skim through a video, check out the deck, maybe watch a couple little tips on it. You know, maybe check out the highlights, listen to the card replacements, and in a couple minutes you're done, right? Ooh, a hunter, interesting. So I'm wondering if it's worth it to make those long videos, but hey, I like to sit down and watch my videos, and I can sit through them, you know, once or twice, no problem. And I, I heard that that's kind of like the test. If you can sit through your own videos, then other people might be able to. Like, if you can't even do it, then how are other people going to be able to do it? You know what I mean? So I thought, I took that to heart. I thought that was a pretty good suggestion from another YouTuber I was watching. Anyway, long story short, let me know what you guys think about video length. As you can see, I do a good job of rambling here. Alright, so I was able to take down that right tower pretty easily. I'm going to place the princess at the bridge here. Just get some more chip damage. I think at this point, oh, I was going to say he might have given up, but no, he goes for an offensive balloon. Yeah, he's got some good chant damage coming in on the left there. I don't have much to counter it. So I'm pretty much going to have to let that tower go. Hopefully the balloon gets destroyed soon. Uh-oh. That's GG. Wow, good game. 
He totally caught me off guard. Alright guys, well, I messed that one up because I was distracted. I didn't answer the counter. I didn't counter. I didn't have an answer to the balloon. So let's jump into another one here. And I'm going to be on like full drive. Like, okay, come on, let's do this. I dropped trophies. I can't be losing, ma losing matches at lower trophy range like some noob here. Just kidding, I am a noob. <laughs> Alright, anyway, let's get back into the match here. I'm going to open with the spawner there. And he's got the hog. I don't even want to answer that because both the princess towers and the spawner hut should do a pretty good job of shutting him down. Alright, let's get another spawner building going here. It would be kind of fun I'd, if you do a, like a spawner deck with some cycle cards. Just get a whole ton of uh, spawner buildings out there as fast as you can. And if you haven't already, I did do a couple, like, spawner decks in Retro Royale, and you can go check out that video if you want. I'll go ahead and link a description, or excuse me, I'll link a card to that, and maybe link it in the description as well. What's more helpful? Let me know, guys. Is it is it helpful if I have the links in the description? Does anybody even check out the cards? Let me know in the comments. I appreciate any and all feedback, as I said earlier. So the expo gets a lock on here. Let me go ahead and let that bandit lock on too. And that's pretty much it. Alright, well. Let me guess. He left. So, I get destroyed. Because I, he catches me off guard. And then I get into a match where my enemy just leaves. What lame content. Okay, let's do another. This is... I don't want to end the, the video like this. Give him a good game. Okay, let's do one more. Maybe we can get an actual good match going here. Alright, let's just jump right in. No need to wait. Give him good luck. Alright, he's only level 9, so that's not good for me. Because I might have an advantage, so it might not make for the best content. But regardless, let's give it a shot, see how it goes. You never know, if he's level 9 and he's this high up, he's probably pretty good. You know, maybe he's got some high level cards. He's invested a bunch into like his giant. There's a Mega Knight. I'll go ahead and band it down here. Oof, she was not close enough to charge. Oh well, she does shut down the goblin barrel with the help of the Ewiz. As he's known to do, he's shooting two units at once. So why don't I play the deck a little bit differently this time? I'll just use like my spells and my legendary cards, my legendary troops and stuff. And I won't use the uh, spawner building so much until we get into double elixir here. So let's go expo instead. Let's catch him off guard. Let's make him think I'm an expo deck. Ooh, there it is. Oh man, that's too bad. It's okay. Because that's actually like an equal elixir trade, right? Now it does have the potential to stay on defense. And as I was saying all that about not using my spawner huts, I really don't have anything else in hand here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a terribly placed spawner hut there. What wonderful video content, guys. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Let's go for Ewiz. Oh, he's going for that Mega Knight again. He must have gotten the Mega Knight recently and he likes it. Or maybe it's just like what he had in, in rotation, kind of like how I had the Spawner Hut. So I'll go ahead and band it. That should actually do a decent job. I got Log in hand this time, so I'm going to go ahead and log that Goblin Barrel. And as usual, that's a direct counter to the Goblin Barrel. Shuts it down for positive elixir trade. Alright, Bandit charges in and hits the Wizard, which is actually good for me, because that finishes off the Wizard with the help of the Spear Goblins. Let's put down another Expo. We are now in double elixir time, so let's go ahead and get down some more Huts, and let's get down some Barbarian Huts, too. I think that the Spear Goblins and the Princess Tower, yeah, they'll take care of that. So I will save my Elixir for the Barbarian Hut. I'll place it right up here so it's a little bit safer, and it's not as susceptible to any spells that he might have. Whereas, if I placed it right next to the other spawner hut, it might be a little bit more susceptible to it. Now, there's a trick there. I don't know if I got it. Maybe my Ewiz is too low, low level compared to his level 10 goblins. But if you time it, like, right... You're, you put your Ewiz below your princess tower, like, right, 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 as the goblin barrel shadow is, like, just below the river, like, one or two tiles. Oh, look at that terrible log. A terrible placement of my princess to his log. Anyway, it can supposedly shut them down. Wasted Fireball. Wonderful, wonderful content, Mr. Burger. You're doing so great. Alright, let's see if I can do that thing. Yeah, see, that damaged all three goblins. So that's what I was trying to tell you guys. 
It didn't shut it down because his goblins are level 10 and my Ewiz is only level 1, so the direct interaction is a little bit different. But if they were equal level, then that would pretty much completely shut them down. But you gotta time it perfectly. It's really hard to time, like it's very specific. Alright, nice. I get a lock on with the expo. Let's see if I can do it again there. Oh, that time he actually shot them at the bottom there, so that worked out for me really great. I'm thinking aggressive bandit at the bridge, and honestly, maybe just spell cycle. Ooh, bandit connects. That's it. Good game. Give him a GG. Okay, finally. I got a win there. Finally, I only lost one. <laughs> and that's good, you know? It's like, it, it humanizes me. It, you know, lets me think about where I went wrong and how I could have done better and I think in that case it was just a matter of not paying attention and just being too distracted so that's why it's easier for me to do strategy when I'm watching replays and things like that so thanks everybody for watching this video I appreciate it leave any comments in the comment section below that you have if you have any ideas or suggestions for how I could do things better in the future have a good night